Hey everybody, in today's YouTube video, we are gonna discuss the holy grail. What is it? It's pillar two. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What do you mean, it, coach? Not pillar one? You serious? No, pillar two. Pillar one sets up the killer pillar two. Again, if you've been looking at our system, we've got free videos and different things that explain the throwing chain reaction system. If you haven't picked those up, go ahead to our website, check that out. So what we've talked about is how we set up the throw properly, pillar two. This is getting left is another term that a lot of coaches in the throw say, which again, I know isn't fair to lefties, but because you get right when you're a left-handed thrower. But the point is what we will do is when we're sitting here, we have to learn how to move out and around. Many coaches and coaching colleagues compliment me on the ability for us to get our athletes constantly around and great left, and they get that nice dynamic balance position. Let's look at Sandra Prokovic. She gets way left, look at her shift and move, and then she sets up and she's gonna drop in and create that nice monster sweep. She gets one, two, three, are awesome. Let's look at uh, Frederick Dockers. Love the way he moves. I love Daniel Stahl and uh, Andreas Guzdias. He looks very much the same. You see what these guys are all doing. I love uh, Nadine Mueller of Germany. You look at the way these guys move, there's this very distinct movement around the left. When you see the same thing in the shot put, in the rotational shot, of course, when we look at Darrell Hill, we look at Ryan Krauser, we look at Tom Walsh, we look at these guys and how they constantly move around. When you look at the women's shot, again, I think you have up and coming US thrower. Look at Maggie Ewan. You see how they all move around and that's the objective. They're all being coached and they're all trying to get around that left to create that entry into the throw. This is the key that you guys want to understand about your throwing. When you are falling, you cannot fall into the throw and that isn't right. We're gonna be losing speed. Yes, there's some body weight and some gravity pulling you, but it's a recovery action. And if you look at the best throwers in the world for the last 30 years, nobody's doing that. You can't handle the truth. So remember the key thing that what we wanna do is we start understanding pillar one is about a nice, clean, neutral setup so that we can move long and move ourselves in and around so that we can drop in and apply speed. That's our pillars one, two, and three on the throwing chain reaction system. Again, we're always trying to help you understand segments, how you do it, so then you put it all together in a fluid, smooth motion. And that is, again, always our goal in the TPR. And if you go out and do this stuff now, I guarantee you it's gonna clean up your throat, it's gonna make a massive difference, but you need to understand the concept of how to get around the entry side and come in, not turning, just turning around is gonna cause you to fall. So again, just turning around, we're getting this position. I wanna see this position, so I'm out here, right? You can see how I'm gonna move around. And look at the counter, so a little better counter. Feel how we counter, if this counters, look at how it'll naturally stretch. So he's gonna lean, so we're gonna set the stack. Chest, hip, knee, foot stacked, right? We all get that simple concept of a stack. Now, does you see this position? This is different than the position he first set up, but it looks so close. But this one's better. This is the example I always like to do. I'm gonna turn his foot. Oh, look, I turned his left foot and his hip moved. So action, reaction, you guys got that? The band is off of his back. That means this arm's open too much. The arm has to stay here, so the band stays across the shoulder. This arm stays back. Does that make sense? Now, he's gonna rotate the lower body. He's blocking, he's gonna block. Okay, that's a better position. You know, coach tells you to put your left hand right there, and the next throw, you put your hand right there. To do that, you have to feel what you're doing. And to feel what you're doing, you can't be going full speed. Now, just the opposite next week or two weeks when you're in your track meet. You shouldn't be trying to feel what you're doing. You should just be trying to direct your energy into the ball or the discus so it goes for you. Does anybody think about walking when they're walking? <laughs> Hopefully not, but you don't have to go left, right, left, right. How come? Because you've done it so many times, you don't have to think about it anymore. That's what you have to do in the ring. You have to practice it so many times 
and you're so perfect at it that you don't have to think about it. Then you just think about throwing far. That's how it works. That's how your brain works. Myelin myelination. It's what your brain does. It's not muscle memory. It's brain memory. Your brain sends responses and information the way you want it to go. But until you build that up around your receptors, you're not going to move very fast or you're not going to do what you want to do. Key to myelin myelination doesn't matter how fast you go. No, you can do these things at a walking speed and it will start developing in your brain that that's what you want to do. Then you can just start going faster and faster. So that's why when we're doing this, thinking about what I'm doing, not thinking about how far I'm from. The hardest person to beat is yourself. Beating other people is easy. The key is you have to work. Perfecting the movement. You all have an understanding of how to throw, right? So now all you have to do is perfect that. It takes time. It's like martial arts. I, I apply a lot to throwing from martial arts. I really love samurai. I love the aspect of how the samurai look at what they do. What happens if a samurai is not very good? He's dead. Right? Because the other samurai beat him. You guys just get to go home and say he beat me by three inches. You lose some samurai, your head's laying on the ground. So the greatest samurai, anybody know who the greatest samurai of all time was? Miyamoto Musashi. 63 duels. He died of old age. What does that mean? He never lost. He never lost because he perfected his movements. He understood what it took to win in competition, and that was to practice what you're doing every day and prepare yourself for competition. Don't just train, train to win. Obviously, samurai, if you don't train to win, your head's on the ground. To win is just to be better than you were yesterday.